the 2020 inco terms are out well they've been out since um, september 2019 so that's not the point of this video the point is to look at the changes that you can expect in these um in the latest version of the inco terms that is the inco terms 2020. First of all, if you're new in this channel, welcome, I'm Moses. In this channel, we look at uh, videos from the following areas, that is business, finance, and legal aspects. So at some point when you're watching this video, you may want to subscribe so that uh, anytime we put on a new video, you'll be notified. So let's jump into um, the changes in the Inco Terms 2020. Now straight away, these are the terms that you are going to be using if you're using the latest version of Inco Terms. That is XWAX, Free carrier, carriage pay to, carriage and insurance pay to, delivered at place, delivered at place and loaded, delivered duty paid. So those are going to be the multimodal inco terms, which means you can use them with whichever means of transport. Now we have the inco terms that are going to be used by um, sea and inland water bodies. So these are going to be the, the so called the maritime inco terms. So they will include free alongside ship, free on board cost and freight, cost insurance freight. If you're wondering um, which inco terms, which version of inco terms do I use? They're really simple. These are contract and just like in any contract, you're always free to contract using whichever terms you find suitable as long as those terms are legal, which means you can contract using whichever version of inco terms you like. So if you're into the 2010, you can use 2010. If you, are, if you like 2000, you can use those ones. But it's a catch you have to make it expressly known in the contract that you're using this version of Inco terms. Now, if you don't do that, the assumption is going to be that you're using the Inco terms 2020. So let's look at what has changed. The first change is the free carrier. If you have no idea what FCA is, free carrier sort of works this way. The seller delivers goods to a carrier who's been appointed by the buyer. Um, the place of delivery is important because that is what's going to determine loading and unloading. This is what I mean. If delivery is made at a seller's premise, the seller is liable for the loading. If delivery occurs elsewhere, the buyer is responsible for the unload. The main change to FCA in Cotam 2020 is the term now allows the seller to require the buyer to procure an onboard bill of loading. This will help in specifying that the goods have been loaded aboard a ship. Now, in order to understand that, let's assume that you're dealing in containers. One of the things that you'll notice is that people who are shipping containers tend to like using free on board. The reason is simple. The, the risk passes from the seller to the buyer once those things are on board the ship. But um, there is a problem. The problem is that containers don't just make it straight from the truck on board a ship. They'll come from the truck and then go to a container yard. While they're at the container yard, the risk still lies with the seller because the risk hasn't passed from the seller to the buyer. The other thing also is that um, if anything at that point, there, there's no evidence that the shipping has already taken place. So in order to solve this problem, okay, people prefer using FCA where you simply deliver those goods to a carrier. But the problem is that uh, again, delivering the goods to a carrier, you still have an issue of uh, proving that those goods have been shipped, especially if you're being paid, if, if the payment agreement relies on a letter of credit because with a letter of credit when you take that to the bank you need to prove to the bank that you ship those goods and uh, it becomes difficult because you don't have an onboard bill of lading so with the new fca the buyer is required actually the the, the seller can require the buyer to, to procure an onboard bill of lading which now becomes part of the proof that the goods have been shipped so the seller can take that to the bank and they immediately get paid. So look, if you're having a problem with the FCA, uh, you, you know, you can do two things. You can watch some of the videos on this playlist and there is, there's a video on FCA there. Or alternatively, you can check into the video description and uh, access, there's a link there to access one of my Udemy courses. It's a, it's a simple course really that sort of makes you understand the general rules regarding income terms. Now the second change that you're going to expect or that you should be expecting with the Inco term 2020 is introduction of DPU that is delivered at place and loaded. So in Inco terms 2010 you had a term referred to as delivered at terminal. So delivered at terminal is now being changed to delivered at place and loaded. 
Of course, you may wonder why why are they changing it? Because if you look at it, you straight away realize that the obligations are still the same. Now, there are two reasons why ICC decided to do this. And the first reason is people were confusing delivered at terminal and delivered at place, basically that and that. And um, well, if you're confusing those ones, is the difference. With delivered at terminal, delivery takes place once the goods have been unloaded from the carrying vessel and made available to the buyer at a specified place within the terminal. So this is unlike delivered at place, okay? In which case, delivery takes place before goods are unloaded when they are placed at the buyer's disposal on the arriving means of transport. Now, ICC believes that uh, those changes, okay, switching from DAT to DPU is going to make it easier for the users to understand or the to, to know which terms to use. Now, let me know in the video, rather in the comment section, if this actually makes it easier for you. If you are having a problem with those two, okay, DAT and DAP, or, you know, if you're okay with them and, and if you are comfortable with the new one, the DPU. Okay, let me just know that in the comment section. Now, the second reason why ICC decided to make the change from DAT to DPU is because, remember, this is a multi-model uh, term, which means it can be used with any means of transport. And so there is no there is no guarantee that whichever place you're going to be delivering those goods is going to be a terminal. So in this case, delivered at place unloaded. Place simply refer to whichever place the buyer and the seller agreed to. And so that place is where the goods are going to be to be unloaded. Now the third the third change that you can expect as you're using the Incoterm 2020 is difference coverage of transport insurance in um, CIP and CIF. If you look at Incoterm 2010, you quickly realize that uh, the issue of insurance, it was always, this, this is how it was, okay? The seller was to take a minimum cover as long as, you know, that, that qualifies as insurance. But uh, one of the issues that ICC realized, okay, from the feedback they got from the users of Incoterm was that CIP and uh, CIF don't really cover the same thing, okay? I mean, they, they, when you're using them, you're not really handling the same types of goods. And so there was a need for that change. So the change in this case comes this way. The idea is CIF is a maritime only term used for bulky cargoes, which require at least an insurance with the minimum cover of the Institute Cargo Clause C. Number of listed risks subject to itemized exclusion. But then if you look at CIP, you realize that it's a multi-model uh, term. Uh, which is often used to, to, to when transferring manufactured goods. And so those ones will probably require a higher level of insurance. So what is the change? The change is the IP now requires at least an insurance with the minimum cover of the Institute Cargo Clause A, all risks subject to itemized exclusion. Then again, remember, it is a contract. And if it is a contract, you are always free to contract using whichever terms you prefer, as long as those terms are legal. So if you like higher insurance cover, make sure that the party knows that. If you're not interested in that, you can always leave things at their own um, device. So if there is any question, do let me know. I'm Moses from the Red Network, and I'll see you in the next video.